Hello, 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 hello. I'm not, I'm not trying to imitate Matthew McConaughey at all. <laughs> that came out in a weird way. <laughs> but I kind of like the way Matthew McConaughey does, does that whole, like, that groove that he does. Anyways, um, hi. Uh, welcome to Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonio. And thank you for being here. Thank you for spending some of your time with us. So today I... Um, I am going to look at some of your comments and um, we'll have a little chat. Now, if we have time, um, then we'll do, uh, at the end, we'll do some updates, see what's happening in the crazy world of the Royals. I have just, I, I know that whole case with um, uh, um, Harry, they didn't, the way I understand it anyways, is that he it's sort of like they wanted to do an a an a, 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 a amendment no 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 not an amendment okay i'm going to use sim simple terms i'm not a lawyer so they wanted to like attach right to what's already there some new evidence and stuff and whatever and the 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 judge said no like this is what you've got this is what you're going to go with you can if you want to open another case um, then yes, you can open another case and that will let it go through the court accordingly. So that is what that, that is all about. So if anyone was worried about whether the case um, was still going, yes, it's still going. It's still going through its um, process. Just that, you know, this particular thing that um, Harry wanted to attach, the judge just said, no open a new case for it um well that is my understanding uh if i'm if i'm wrong someone please correct me and um if i'm right someone please correct me <laughs> um, but that is my simplest simplistic way of um say saying it anyways and may i just say how much i love nigerians like <laughs> They have just been all over about the racist comments coming out from the UK press. And I am telling you, they, listen, you royal rotas and, and, and people that need therapy and need to go reevaluate your life choices. Don't mess with the Nigerians, man. Don't mess with them. I just love what I've been watching and seeing and so on because they think that this sense of superiority and empire that people are not going to push back or or you know they they they're in the right because they know better. They just keep exposing their ignorance. Like they're they're the one comment the Nigerian commentator our, our newscaster, sorry. Um, he said, you know, and I'm paraphrasing here, you put a microphone in front of an idiot and the idiot just starts to talk. Like, they, the things that they're saying has no contextual, historical meaning behind it. They don't understand or know the history of this, this crap that they're talking about. And the hate, the hate that they've got for this one woman the hate is so great, they can't even pretend anymore or contain it anymore. It is just pathetic. Pathetic. But I'm telling you, Nigeria man, you folks are just I'm I'm so I'm so happy. So happy, so proud because you know other I don't know. I don't know if other nations would just not say anything and, and just like but you know, comparing Nigeria to certain... Oh, I'm not even going to dignify it. We already did our analysis and and talked about it, but I'm just really, really happy that Nigeria's just dragging them, dragging them. The What's-his-name had deleted his post. Um, oh, oh, okay. 
Like, what is, like, they really need to, and I know I've said this before, but they need to reevaluate their life choices. Like, these are grown people. I know this is an industry, and I know you do what you do because there's a paycheck at the end of the tunnel, but gosh, this is your life. Your life is spreading hate towards a woman that doesn't even care to know your name. A woman that hasn't even said anything about any of you. Any of you. How idiotic is it that when Kate got sick or whatever she has or whatever's happened to her, that you had to mention Megan and Megan should do this and Megan should do that and Megan should Megan should do nothing. Why would you bring Megan into all of that mess when you have make um um Kate's husband? Kate's husband had a garden party the other day. His wife is 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 I don't know whether she's 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 in a coma, whether she's um, her chemotherapy is getting better. Her medication is getting. I don't know what has happened to the woman. Um, whatever it's 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 whatever. She's not my concern. Um, so he's just having a garden party. Look, listen. If my spouse was 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 ill, and that, that's the last thing I would be having some garden party and invite my cousins to come over and help. Like, people, why are you still commenting on Meghan Markle? She left. She doesn't even want to, like, exit the airport to come to, like, whatever right now with, with you people because it's not safe for her, nor for her husband, nor for her children. And if you're going to say to me, oh, no, we provide security, oh, shut up. I know you know better. Wow, I'm getting like <laughs> I said this was a this was a spicy intro. Anyways, where where was I? I like, yes, thumbs up, please like. Um that helps the algorithm. I don't know how it helps, but it does. And leave a comment. As long as your comment is not rude or mean or it's not uh, one of those comments that is against the Sussexes. Listen, stop leaving me comments trying to tell me something that you think you know about the Sussexes. I do not care. I do not care. Right? Okay, one last thing. Let me say this, okay? Then, we so this whole thing about the king, he had a room, didn't have a room. He had a house, didn't have a house. Listen, let me let me let me explain something to you like um shallow minds or void of of analytical thinkers in your system. Harry is a classy classy fellow. When he arrived there was all this stuff about what's happening. Is he going to meet this father? Not to meet, but, and of course, of course, the usual nonsense. The palace says nothing because they need to keep the upper stuff a lip, or whatever, right? And pretend they're not briefing, they're not doing this or that. No, they, they have no comments, nothing. Oh, poor me. So with all of that, Harry decided, okay, I'm going to make it classy. I'm going to put a sort of a neutral um, 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 announcement out. Right? I thought it was beautiful. We wanted to see each other, but, you know, his diary is full. Um, and I totally understand his diary is full. Maybe the next time. And that's great. It's not, it's not blaming him. So he looks bad. It's not blaming Harry. Sorry, it's not, no, it's just, it's just neutral. It's wonderful, classy. Then what happened? Then the media, all of a sudden, had a bit of a, a what, a U-turn, a side turn, something turn, and they were like, 
oh, that is awful. How can the king do this? You know, his son is here. So they started to kind of do this little drum beat in favor of Harry. And some of them now were going, how dare Harry put an announcement like that out? How dare he? His father is sick. His father, oh, get off your soapbox and all your freaking nonsense. Right? So, listen, the guy that made the, the announcement, papim papam, finished, met his wife, they went to Nigeria, bam, 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 had a great time, right? He, 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 <laughs> He arrived with his wife as a duchess, and he left with a wife who's a freaking princess. And listen, she's a queen, top to bottom, all over, right? And the people on, on you know, where were like, oh my gosh, no, no, no. And then they started with the racism, like just, they, they, they just went, they took all their mask off and everything. They just showed full on racism. They just showed it. Empire racism. And someone somewhere was like, how can we how can we bring this guy down? We need to we need to turn that thing about something. Oh, I know. Let's just leak that we did have a conversation and we did offer to give him a room. Yeah. He's the one who refused it. He's the one who didn't want to meet. And then, that's what they just fed to the idiots. And the idiots went out and started to now bad talk <laughs> Harry. Oh, Harry this and that. We knew he was, oh, Megan is controlling him. Oh, blah, blah, blah. The same, ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum ba The same old tired drumbeat. So tiring. Right? Then it comes out that <laughs> the guy's like, uh, yeah, there was a conversation. And I said, um, if you're going to provide me with that room or that place or whatever, I'm getting security also, right? And when they said uh, no, he went, okay, that's all right. I'll stay at my hotel. Look, I don't trust those people. And he shouldn't either. He knows them. It's his family. He knows them. And we don't know where, you know, Madame is because I I don't know you know who like whatever's happening to Kate whatever they have been capable of doing they're capable of doing it to Harry because we already know that at the height of his family being in danger his father took away his security. And listen, you people who want to correct me, or, or the, you know, isn't the, it's not the king. The king doesn't have authority over, oh, shush, 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 shush. Don't be stupid. You know better. So shush. Don't leave me some message about this thing, and yeah, you don't understand British society, and this is the way, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. All right? Don't care. That guy, all right? knows who you people are. And as much as he will have grace for his family, because he understands that they're quote-unquote trapped, he's not going to let himself be trapped. Okay? That's a military guy you're talking to. That's a guy now that that is in spaces and speaking to people that, some of you will never speak to and never be in those spaces. I have one last question. <laughs> I think this podcast is going to go for two hours now. One last question. Why do you... F <laughs> Why do you have the need... And this is to the royal commentators, Rhoda and all these nonsense people. 
if this is a family matter, why do you feel that you need to interfere in this family matter? Oh, the king has rejected him. Oh, um, his brother has snobbed him. Oh, this one didn't... Why are you interfering in a family matter? Because so many of you said at one point when, you know, it didn't look so good for the palace and for the monarchy, you're all like, but this is a family matter. It's a family matter. They will resolve it. It's a family matter. We shouldn't inter... Oh, oh, you shouldn't, but you, you, you're all interfering, though. You all have an opinion, and that opinion is usually against the Sussex. It's, it's always like, it's always Meghan's fault. It's always Harry's fault. And <laughs> let me tell you, the last two weeks, you folks have just shown how stupid you are, number one. And number two, that your colonial empire attitude and racist and uneducated because some of the nonsense you've said, it would be so easy to just check, to get yourself some history and understand what is coming out of your freaking mouth. But you also used to having this narrative, right? You all just show up and it's, it's easy freaking money. It's easy money. All you do is show up and talk about how mean Megan is, how all the tropes that you want to use for a person of color, you just use them, but you pass them as just like, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Listen, we, we, we see you. Baby, we see you. Because we have, <laughs> we've grown up with people like you. We've experienced people like you. All right, so subscribe, <laughs> thumbs up, leave a comment. <laughs> Let's get it on. Okay, let's um, get to the comments. So we'll start with the latest um, episode, which was elitism. Um, and let's see what uh, Marsha Williams wrote. So Marsha wrote in the comments, Great afternoon, Antonio, and everyone of Sussex land. Yay, good afternoon. Um we could safely say Harry and Meghan will break that cycle of elite boarding school with their children. Y yeah, that's that's a possibility, Marsha. I, you know, I don't see them being the type of parents that would send their children off to boarding school like at seven, eight years old. Um, I think I I, I said in the podcast that the Earl Charles Spencer, so um, Harry's uncle, Diana's brother, uh, he has a book out and it, it, it basically, it's his memoir and he chronicles and talks about his experience at, at boarding school, which is absolutely awful. And he was sent to boarding school at the age of eight. You know, I, I, it is, it is mind boggling to me and, but I've come to accept, I think, that there are people who are not meant to be parents. And when I mean parents, I mean to parent someone. They, they produce the child because they, they have to, um, but then they, they, the child becomes a sort of a nuisance. Like, like you know, we, we don't need to see you. We don't need to hear you until you are older. And they sort of give the child then to the institution. And one thing that um, actually I, that Charles Spencer talked about 
was empire and that all of this sort of boarding school, elite school for the, that that ultra rich 1%, it's it's tradition, it's the way they're conditioned, they're they're conditioned. Um so knowing that for example Harry went to um Eton and, and knowing all of those things that some of those schools involve, I I I agree with you, Marcia. I, I don't see them doing it. Mind you, you know, um Prince Archie can always say, Hey Pa, I I, I wanna go to boarding school or something like that or um, you know, he, they may want to send when they're old, much older, not the age of eight, to you know one of these elite schools or something like like that. So, who knows? But I think with a mother like Megan and a dad like Harry, those those kids are going to be well rounded and prepared, right? We would hope, and I. But I think certainly. All right, um, next one. Uh, let's get uh, Rising Phoenix. Rising Phoenix, thank you, said. Thank you, Antonio. Mesmerizing visuals, as always, and content is on point. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Rising Phoenix. Charles supposedly attended a public boarding school that was one of the most isolated and abusive of them all. Certain British attitudes, such as exceptionalism, resistance, resistance to change, and focus on tradition, traditionalism, the in, infamous stiff upper lip, etc., have flown down to the general public from the leadership trained in these schools. I love your work. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I I I do it with with love, uh, dedication, and um, always trying to do my best and bring my best um, every time I put one of these episodes of podcasts out. Thank you so much, and I really appreciate every single time um, kindness and kind words because sometimes some of these episodes are like ah so much research or so much stuff with that you know it's done in in 20 minutes or or half an hour and i'm like this is it that's it and sometimes it's well it's well received and sometimes it isn't so anyways let's i'm getting off off topic thank you so much Ryzen phoenix yes now i don't remember whether i've read this or i watched it in a documentary but i do remember um, um, knowing that at the time Prince Charles went to a school that was quite awful. The kids were mean to him. Um, he was bullied. Um, you know, he sort of had this because um, Prince Philip, his his um, father, you know, had a stuff like he was too. He was too soft. I'm going to use the word soft because that's the word that was used. For me, when my grandfather told my dad, you know, he's too soft, need to, you know, harden him up a little bit or something. And then they took all my Lego sets and stuff away and gave me guns and like play guns and, and, and trucks and vans. And, and I just found the entire thing absolutely idiotic and stupid. You know, there's certain things you remember from your childhood and it, they're very vivid you 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 can you can you can you can, you can, you can smell the air you can you can feel the atmosphere and 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 all of that and this is one of those moments and incidents that i absolutely have very clear memory of and i remember when i i got the the machine guns and stuff i just looked at it and thought why why would they give a child why would they give a boy like machine guns like this this this, this stuff kills people I don't understand their logic. And I really didn't. And, you know, I was a skinny little <laughs> sickly child. And I just took the guns outside and I just broke them in half, just broke them and took them back. And um, I think I handed them to my dad. I don't remember if I did, but, well, that part I don't remember. But I, I just thought it was so idiotic. Having said that, like, there's other 
boys in in my neighborhood who who had toy guns um but somehow in my head i was like well if they want to have that that's okay but for me um i want nothing to do um with it so it's 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 sort of that whole thing that i i i believe prince philip was like he's too you know because he likes to read and garden and these these, these are seen as soft kind of things we need to be to macho the boy up we need to make it him more masculine and and you know i think all of that stems from that fear oh is he is he going to be queer right and i i i find the whole thing so disturbing the whole sort of notion of what is masculine and masculinity and all of that because you know i i've 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 met some <laughs> Some men who were very masculine and and and, uh, and 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 had no 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 substance, no 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 true character. I would even say no no bravery, right? That they sort of stood for nothing. And I've met what people may qualify and you know very fragile looking men, uh, uh, thin and and but 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 very intelligent and will stand their ground and, and will go and march with you and protest or whatever. So, and vice versa, right? I'm not trying to stereotype anything or anyone here, but I'm just saying that these stereotypes that we have and that we end up punishing our kids because the, 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 the child is a little bit too effem a feminine to do soft or whatever, it's just ridiculous. But the thing that, for me, um, Rising Phoenix, that stands out is if I were to have that experience and I mean I, I had my own bullying experiences and all the stuff that I went through as as a child um, and it, it it didn't make me into an angry person if anything I think I became even more empathetic in trying to understand people and when I see people in pain or I see people suffering I want to help and you know it's because one un I think anyways one understands that better if if you've suffered if you've 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 um, gone through certain in these cases like ab abuse and all of that I, I would think right my simple minded way I would think that one would become more empathetic because one has gone through those things, right? It's like if, if you've been discriminated against, then you wouldn't go discriminate because you know what it feels like. But surprisingly, for most of these um, people who've gone through that system, they come out of it angry. And, and um, Charles certainly, I think, he came out of there even more um, isolated and and internal, right? And the person who gave him refuge and gave him safety, I would say, right? Because there is a connection about if you don't feel there's a psychological thing about when um, you're 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 in an unsafe area or place or you don't feel safe that the adults that you're looking for to come and protect you many times it's your mother and uh, your um, father and if they're not there right that's just, it's sort of like the the ultimate betrayal so i think he, he didn't have that at all but he found it in camilla so camilla became his surrogate mother became lover, became all these things, became safe space, became protector. And I think that does something to the psyche of someone who has suffered abuse. So in me even trying to understand why a father would behave the way he behaves with Harry, I think Camilla is his everything. Camilla is his his beginning, his middle, his end. She is everything because she she was there and provided him everything. So in, in his head, 
she is his everything. His protector, his safety net, his his lover, his mother, his his father, his everything. So there is no messing with with Camilla. And Harry messed with Camilla by say saying the things he's he said by exposing what 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 he exposed about her. And she's 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 not a nice woman, right? A very calculative person also. And look, she she's she's not not she's no concert now. She's people are forced to call her queen. So I think it's sort of sad that they sort of come out with all this trauma and how they decide to handle it or deal with it. But then it expands exponentially to the rest of society because that 1% determines, and especially with the hierarchies of, of the system, what is right and what is not. Right? Everyone wants to be aristocratic. Everyone wants to like, you know, where we drink tea like this and we, we swivel like that and you, you pronounce a word like this and you, you d right? So they're all looking up to, to, to the upper class in order to understand how to behave and what to do. And the upper class is completely generational of abuse and, and people who are not all quite there. And they're putting the emphasis on the wrong things, the feelings on the wrong things. So, boy, I feel like that entire place needs an overhaul and a lot of people need to go to therapy and they need to start with these boarding schools, really. Um, I'm going to play a little clip now from um, the podcast I was listening to with um, Earl Spencer and um, I thought what he said was very insightful about how these boarding schools prepare these boys, because they are the elite, prepare these boys for the empire. Jews first arose a decade or so ago. There was a famous lawyer who was heading the cases, and I wrote to her. And I didn't want to initiate a case, but I said, if somebody comes forward, I, I will, I'll validate. And uh, in fact, I never heard from her, so I assume nobody did. You know, part of the problem here is you're dealing with a, a school with a very clever culture. The outward sign was that it was a very Christian school and the appalling headmaster led the services and, you know, not, not the Sunday ones, but he was in charge of prayers and Christianity for us. And he had this sort of wry humour that made parents think that he was yes. one of them and they could trust him. Very clever. I'm sure it's a common trick with people like that, abusers. But for an intensely unfunny man, he managed to turn on uh, a, a rich vein of adult humour during his termly reports to the parents. And time and time again, there are not many parents left actually, because obviously they'd be quite an age. But when I have confronted the parents in a, in a thoughtful way, not in an angry way, about how, to, how come they let their children suffer this, not mine because they were dead, they all said, but he wrote such jolly, amusing reports. And that was so clever, because how could such a very funny man be bad? But he was. He was evil. He did evil. He did evil. I don't know anything. Is there something different between what well, he I, did? Well, I, I think he certainly did evil acts. I don't know if he's inherently evil because yeah. he did them. Yeah. So, um, but I'm not here on a moral point, yeah. I suppose, but he was a seriously deranged man, I'd say, apart from anything else. But also there is, you know, the transgenerational trauma in the upper classes of this sort of contract of this is how we do things. This is how we've always done them. Mm. We don't question them. We just sort of follow by the book. We send our young boys away at six, seven, eight. We live like this. These are the rules. And it enables this kind of rigidity of it enables parents to in some way take no responsibility for the decisions that they're making. It's like it's handed over to the system, which is a transgenerationally traumatic system of abandonment. Yeah, because I, I write history books actually, I really delved into the history of this. I found it so interesting. It's to do with the, the, the empire, right? Yes, mm. but essentially I found documentation in my family records going back 300 years where 
the older generation are sending their boys off age eight or whatever to school, boarding school. And they're writing to each other, the adults, saying, of course it's going to be horrendous, but at least they're too young to know how awful it's going to be. So they know what they're doing. It's a conscious cauterizing of emotions. And yes, you're right, I think it is to do with the empire. I think um, the idea would be that if you could cauterize the emotions of a young boy very early, you would, could send him anywhere in the world to administer on behalf of London and he wouldn't be homesick, he wouldn't have normal emotions, he would have the stiff upper lip, which the English are famous for, but sadly that comes at a hell of a price. Yeah, I mean, what you shut down, you shut down everything. You doesn't, you know, if you shut down your capacity to feel pain and sorrow, it also shuts down your capacity to feel love, openness, trust. So you, you live in a very narrow window of emotional capacity, so you see the world in a very kind of robotic way, which works functionally, yes. but is uh, devastating psychologically. Yeah. All right, so, I mean, what, 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 what do you think? That, that was pretty, a, a little bit intense, right? Because, like, he actually, I think that, that sort of bridge was missing a little bit for me as to why all these schools like they they're so similar in regards to the experiences that they um that they produce and it makes sense i mean 300 years ago they were they were basically stripping away any kind of emotion or feelings that these boys um were having or or even trying to develop because these were the boys that would become the men that they would be sending off to the empire, to the different colonies. And we know what happened in many of these colonies, the atrocities that happened, that, that, that you know, Britain committed, but no one wants to talk about, about that. Anyways, so it... it was really sort of an eye open a little bit um, to make that um, connection. All right, now next we'll go to the next episode. Um, let's do the anniversary uh, video, and let's do Anne and Francisco. And uh, Anne Francisco writes, Antonio, you delivered well researched, insightful, positive, informative narratives podcasts to be heard everywhere amplifying oh thank you you know you folks will be like going, well, why are you like didn't you read it before like you put it on i haven't actually read read this this the ones that i have put here i haven't read them um completely um i just thought you know so when, anyways um where did I leave off? Um, uplifting um, the spirit of celebration, their sixth anniversary, their sixth wedding anniversary of our lovely, much loved, remarkable, incredible, courageous couple who stand together with great positive outlook in life despite the trials and tribulations it encountered against all odds. They have proven. Um, they have proven them wrong. No matter that challenges they will encounter in the hand of this horrible, horrendous, evil empire, they will remain stronger as ever. They are determined to live happily with their two young children, Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet Diana. They are proud of of what they have achieved on their own, living independently out of their hard work, not relying solemnly anymore of the British taxpayer money. That's true. They're striving successfully, earning their own um, marks, merits of respect and recognition uh, were, were worldwide. Um, they rightfully deserve um happy sixth anniversary uh, wedding anniversary 
um, everyone across the globe wishing the best of fruitful blessing, uh, happiness in life. Move on forward on your journey, new beginning of life. Oh, that's so beautiful. And or Annie, um, I think Annie's with an A N N I E, right? So tell me which 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 one is I'm pronouncing correctly. Either Anne Anne Francisco or Annie Francisco, or maybe there is a third. And I apologize again to everyone for butchering your um, handle. Yeah, I just think it's so incredible. It's incredible that when you sit down or stand up or whatever, and you think about everything that has been thrown to this couple. I mean, the, the, uh, what, what's that saying? The, ba the bath water with a baby in it or something, or the sink water, or the, I don't know. Again, here goes Antonio trying to <laughs> trying to put <laughs> trying to trying to do sayings. And then, <laughs> the bird that wakes up early eats the worm. <laughs> oh, I really need to stop trying this stuff. But um, they 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 have. They've basically thrown everything at them. And by the grace of God, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, you know, I think. Prayers are, are a powerful thing. And I don't know how much of this Diana, Princess Diana, had. But what I do know is that there is an army of people, of us, that in our prayers, whether you, in any form that you pray or you meditate, we always include you know, the Duke and the Duchess of Sussex, their children, Mama Doria, and the people in their ecosystem. It's just amazing what they've done. And they just, you know, keep keep moving forward. I'm so proud of the man that Harry is. He's such a... a, a, a um, an example right, of what being a good man should look like, at, at, at least from what I know and we know about, about him. And Megan is just a force to be reckoned with. And I totally understand, you know, being that, that strong, independent, um, feminist woman and have an institution crush you the way that institution crushed her, but didn't, didn't, you know, didn't accomplish or, 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 or get to do what I think they ultimately wanted to do. So by the grace of God, by the grace of God. All right. That was, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, Anne or Annie. Um, okay, let's go to the next one. And let's take a quick look at um, what Marsha wrote again here. Um, wonderful. Marsha wrote, quite right you are, Antonio, in spite of the efforts of many to tear them apart, they are still singing. Yes, baby. Darling, darling, stand by me. Oh, stand by me. Um, congratulations and happy sixth wedding anniversary, Prince Harry and Princess Meghan. Beautiful. Weren't you, when, when the choir started to sing that song? I don't know what hallelujah came into me, but I was just filled with something that, for me, it felt like a new beginning of something especially within the royal family. You know, I know that song. Um, my parents have sang that song. I, I grew up listening to that song. And it, it, it symbolized something important, right, for this marriage. 
And at the same time, having those voices in that cathedral, I was like, this is special. Even when um, um, the pastor um, was, was, was doing his, his sermon and, you know, the so-called royals were snickering and doing whatever they, they, were, they were doing, I, I just thought how shameful, number one, for them. But I thought, how beautiful to hear his voice and the way he delivered that ceremony in that cathedral. How beautiful. Um, so yeah, just, just absolutely great. All right, let's, let's grab an, uh, another one uh, in the comments. Um, Jackie. Okay, so Jackie, Jackie said, thank you for those beautiful words, Majesty Sussex report about our faves, Harry and Meghan. Thank you for those beautiful words about our beautiful Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Again, thank you for your beautiful commentary on Prince Harry and Prince Megan, Princess Megan, on, um, on their, um, to God be the glory, on their sixth um, wedding anniversary. They're blessed by the Most High God. And as always, we're praying without season for a um, Sussex family, Mama Doria and all of God's people everywhere in the mighty name of our risen Savior and Lord. We give all the praise and glory. Amen and amen. Um, excuse all the text. Oh, errors, my nonsense. Listen, um, write as much as you want. And um, I, I, anything that is sort of I, I put the words together and I figure out what 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 it is. Not to worry at all, please. No need to um apologize. Uh yes. Yes, to 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 God be the glory. Um because they 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 had to be there has to be something more than what we know about these two people, their strength, their character, all of that. They had to be something more that was guiding them, protecting them, right? And because I, I have no doubt that in spare, Harry just told us like maybe the tip of the iceberg. And he is a gentleman. He has a heart of gold that he still wants to give his family an opportunity or two or three or four, right? Because I think for him, he looks at it and it's, these, these are his words, that they're trapped. They, they don't have an exit strategy at all. And they can't really exit. Well, you know, theoretically speaking, I mean, they could if they wanted to. <laughs> but I think that's the way he, he, excuse me, he might see it. And, but there's certainly, certainly um, the protection of, of, of the Almighty. And as I said before, you know, continue to include them in our in our prayers always thank you so much Jackie and our next one is in Francais but I will do the English translation so um, Jacqueline Jacqueline Brunette um, and Jacqueline says what what a shame that this marriage has not changed the unhealthy minds of some why did such a beautiful ceremony not result in the reconciliation of people? The Sussexes had done everything to show the world that this could be possible. But alas, this marriage was not to the taste of some. And some uh, and, um, wanted to sabotage this couple 
What a shame. I wish the Sussexes happiness and courage for the years to come, hoping that all these um, people will forget them one day. God is in control. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, um, Jacqueline. Yes, yeah. I as I as I just said, I that that ceremony moved me, and because it was also unexpected. Like when I heard the 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 gospel choir singing, and I was like, "What was that? What was that? What was that?" And I was like, "Oh my gosh, they've got a gospel choir." Um, and it was just so beautiful and wonderful. And then every time the camera would pan over at ah, that side, and you would see someone either snickering or making some funny face or something, I just, I, it, just, I, it, it felt weird to me. And I felt uneasy. But I always sort of brought it back and thought, no, this is about Harry and Megan, and this is their special day. And look how beautiful she looks, look how happy he looks. And Mama Doria is like, oh my gosh, she's just, she's just killing it in that Oscar de la Renta. And, um, you know, it, it, it brought me joy. I just, it just brought me joy. And I just sort of try and ignore the, the 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 feeling I was getting from that side of of the pew, and hold and behold, no now now we know all the stuff that was happening, and I do not uh, I do not know how how Megan kept it like together. That 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 woman is look. She was meant to be where she is right now. She was placed there by powers that um, she didn't even know. And he is with her because he needed and he, he, he was destined to be with, with her. So uh, look, they, they, they are things that I think they will continue to do and to teach and to show um, by what's ha been happening to this couple and the relentless attack on on them, on their marriage, on their family. And, you know, we, as I said before, continue to support them as best as we can. <laughs> Okay, so we are close to the hour, and uh, I'm going to uh, wrap it up here. So this will be part one, and part two will likely be uploaded later today or tomorrow. So, and in part two, we will be uh, looking at the um, the, uh, the episodes on I'm Not a Racist. I think the discussion there is going to be quite um, interesting. So thank you so much for, for, for this. Thank you for participating, for um, writing your comments. You know, it, 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 it's very special and meaningful to me because when someone takes the extra time to even just say I I love today's podcast or oh, it was alright or what whatever to also to share their own lived experience and experiences it's just absolutely marvelous and and wonderful and it makes me feel very connected to all of you and to what um, and to what we do so thank you take care of yourselves take care of your loved ones. And that stranger along your path, be kind to them. You never know. Until we speak again. British, like, media reacted to Harry and Meghan touring Nigeria. And they said a lot of...
these things. They said a lot of racist things, but one of the things I really want to talk about is when they call Nigeria gullibles because we have so many people who can do some royal families. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say Nigeria is perfect. Nigeria has problems. Everybody knows that. However, Nigeria is what? One of the most populous nations in the world. We have 220 million people, and that's just the official estimate. But one of the things I really want to take into consideration is that if you know anything about Nigerian history, one of the ways the British managed to rule effectively during colonization was through something called indirect rule, which means they went to local leaders of the Igbo tribe, of the Yoruba tribe, of the Hausa tribe, of the Fulani tribe, and then they bribed them in order to gain control over everybody in Nigeria. These fake royals that the British media is now trying to say are foolish, have no legitimacy are the same people that the British government used to colonize Nigeria. So that means when they were benefiting them, they had legitimacy. But when it no longer fits that narrative, that's when it's stupid. This is why I say like British form of racism is just so insidious because it acts like as if Nigerians or Africans in general lack common sense. I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm a, like a huge fan of like the British royal family. They're colonizers. They colonize majority of Africa. But the thing is, whenever somebody interacts with Africa in not the way that they're used to, aka Prince, Prince, what do you call it? William and Kate's thing, when they visited the Caribbean and were waving at people through a freaking cage. Any single time somebody interacts with an African country, like that human beings, like why human beings, like we have a culture that is rich and while it has some problems, has some benefits too. This is the kind of BS that they get. First and foremost, I don't think we should put anybody on a pedestal of the British royal family to the British royal family, but I hate seeing this kind of narrative about how, oh my God, look at the shit they're doing. Megan is a fake princess. No, it's an official title. Just because it doesn't matter to you anymore doesn't mean that you can come and start talking bullshit about people's culture our culture british racism is just like it's it's insane I could have not wasted